Well, hello, everybody. Welcome back to Stake Insanity. Today is day, I don't know, 130, looks like, of my carnivore diet. And um, so this is kind of the update that I've been talking about doing, which is the one about carb loading and what I've learned about that. And the reason that I wanted to talk about that on a carnivore diet channel um, is because I'm starting, I've signed up for the marathon, the London Marathon next year. I have no idea if I'm going to get a spot or not, but I'm assuming that I will end up attempting to run it. So I have like a year to prepare. The reason that I'm starting now is because as I've talked about many times in the past, I'm, I, I got to the point where I could run a half and I ran the Cambridge half marathon before COVID. But since then I've had COVID a couple of times. It's really set me back in my training and essentially I've had to start over. So what I need to do is I need to get myself back up to a base level of fitness so that I can then be ready to actually start the marathon training program when it gets like four months out. So I'm giving myself plenty of time to work up to that. What that means, though, is that at the minute I'm running every day. And what I've found on just doing the carnivore diet is that I can run a couple of days and then I just I'm absolutely wiped out and I struggle to run really slowly, um, even, even really slowly. And so I've. I've been struggling with that because I should be able to do that. And I know everybody's going to say, yeah, you're not eating enough fat and you're not eating enough calories, blah, blah, blah. But I find that when I so severely restrict my carbs, that my body just doesn't really like it when I'm exercising. So I've been trying to find a way to have a few carbs, but to do it in the best way possible. And what started me thinking about this was how do people who are on keto diets, do they carb load before they run a, a long race, like a marathon or something like that? And it sent me down this sort of track in, in you know, this, this sort of wormhole on the internet around what's the best way to do that. And from what I can tell, the best thing seems to be what's called backloading. And if if you've tried to train or you've tried to you know if you work out a lot you might know about this um and if not essentially what it means is is you very carefully select the time that you eat some carbs and it doesn't mean you go out and eat a pizza it's you select some very select carbs but you give your body some carbohydrates basically immediately after you exercise because what it does then is it uses those carbs to convert and to replenish the glycogen in your muscles so that you're ready to go again the next day. And I've been trying this a little bit. And when I say eat carbs, I mean, I'm talking about going from 20, 25 grams of carbs a day to 50 or maybe 55, 60 at the most. So I'm not, again, I'm not going out. I'm not eating brioche. I'm not eating pizza. I'm literally just having some carbs, maybe in some things like some raisins. Um, or I do have sometimes a little bit of rice. And but when I say a little bit, I mean a few tablespoons of rice. Is that enough rice to matter? I don't know. But what I do know is that if I do it that way, it doesn't seem to have any impact on how I feel. Um, and it does. I have been able to train five, six, seven days in a row without really experiencing that absolute just feeling completely dead in between. So that's working for me. And that's what I'm doing at the minute. The other thing that I decided to do is I have stopped weighing myself. I've stopped counting my calories. I've stopped doing all that. The only thing I do is I track my workouts. And so I track my number of steps every day and I track how much cardio I do and how far I run in the times. And then I'm just keeping some notes about how I feel and how my diet was. Now, because I did a hundred and something days on the carnivore diet, 
not every day totally strict, but I know what to do. And because I've locked my food for years, I know, I know roughly how much I should eat every day. And so I find I'm, I'm not doing one meal a day, but I'm close. So I'm not having anything to eat in the morning. I might have a coffee. Um, I, then I go to work and I work the morning. Then I go for lunch. I have some chicken, um, something like that. Generally, uh, a lean sort of a meat during the day. Because I just, like I said in a, in a previous video, I feel better if I kind of have a lighter, leaner meal during the day. And then I might have an afternoon snack of some macadamia nuts or something, but literally like a handful and that's it. So just a few macadamia nuts or something like that. Then I go and I, I do my workout in the evening and then I come home and I'm, I'll have, you know, 300 grams of beef or either in a steak or some mince or something like that. I might have a tea with a bit of milk and maybe a, a teeny bit of like a half a teaspoon of sugar or something like that. And that's, that's pretty much it. Um, maybe I'm not having enough calories or whatever, but I'm not, again, I'm not doing this for the weight loss aspect. So we have to bear that in mind. If Again, if I was trying to lose massive amounts of weight and was really worried about that, then I think I would... I'd probably stick to the diet more, do it in a different way. But what I've found is, is that I can have a few carbs and a little bit of rice, which makes me feel so much better and gives me so much more energy during the day and while I'm working out, but doesn't have any adverse effect on my joint pain, my, all the other stuff that I was experiencing. So the sort of arthritis -y joint pain and also that tendonitis -y kind of feeling that absolutely 100% is due to artificial sweeteners. And I have tested it a couple of times. I've tried after my first incident having a Coke Zero. I've tried having a couple of other things just randomly to see how it reacts and I get exactly the same reaction. And what's interesting is now if I have anything that has sweetener in it, even like a, a smint or some gum, and it has artificial sweetener in it, it comes back. So pretty much gum is out, mints are out, breath mints are out, all that sort of stuff, unless it actually has sugar in it. And if it has sugar in it, I'm fine. So anyway, that's um, that's my update for today. We're going to see how it goes. So I've, I've been sort of six days now um, exercising in a row. My knee feels okay. I haven't had any injuries, touch, touch wood. Um, so hopefully that'll continue, but I'm, I'm trying to just do sort of a little bit of running every day. And then I'm mixing in some weight training with that as well. So we will see how it goes. And, um, yeah, that's, that's pretty much my update for now. Um, so am I hundred percent carnivore? No. Am I ketovore? Kind of. Um, but do I do backloading? Yes. So Again, but I'm not, it's not like I'm going out and eating a bowl of pasta after I work out. And who knows? I I don't know if I'm doing enough of that, but even whether it's psychosomatic and it just makes me feel better in my mind and I think I'm doing better than I am, whatever. It seems to be working at the moment, so I'm going to stick with it. I will, I'll weigh myself again. The last time I weighed myself was 2nd of May. Um... And I was about the same weight that I had been for ages. So I was kind of stuck at 94 anyway. And I just was like, I just, I don't have the brain space for it anymore. So we'll see. I'll weigh myself again in a couple of weeks, maybe just to check in and see where I am. But I don't, frankly, I don't even care at this point. It's just, um, it's just too much to worry about. So anyway, that's my update for today. And um, as always, leave comments for me. I always try and answer everybody if they leave a comment. And if you hadn't subscribed, please subscribe and, uh, and keep track and we'll see where I go. Anyway, see you later. Bye-bye.